Welcome to Thick Town, everyone. Population, this guy. This NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 Ti, specifically MSI's Supreme X version of the card, which launches today with mixed anticipation, depending on whether or not you've got the cash on hand to afford one. No, this is not a Paul's hardware video, but it was a perfect opening. I love it. And Paul, if we ever want to grab a beer, I would love to join you in person. Anyways, this video is about the RTX 3090 Ti. And yes, I am Vega for certain. X Tech. Should you buy this GPU? Now we know that the MSRP pricing, I know it's hard to say that word nowadays, is around $2,200, $2,000 or $1,999. But the GPU from a gaming perspective and a mining perspective, is it worth the price? In my personal opinion, I would say no. We've known for a while that the 3090 and above basically exceeds that which gamers really need to you know play very well high fps high frame rates whatever it may be so the 3090 ti is certainly overkill but many users are buying it right new egg is sold out a number of other outlets are sold out but they didn't sell out quite as fast as the 3060 ti and the 3070 6000 series from amd so obviously interest is still there but the reason I wouldn't get one is I would rather invest my money into something else like the house, the family, or possibly get two GPUs for under the price of 13090 Ti. Now when it comes to a mining perspective, we have some of the hash rates already thanks to our colleagues uh, Chump Change and Rondi. Uh, also other YouTubers are posting their data. so. I went ahead and consolidated all for you down in the description like I normally do on Reddit posts for our GPU mining. Uh, the GPU, the 3090 Ti, or Ti, was able to hit 130 mega hash at 315 watts. Uh, it's a little bit more than the 3090. Uh, speculation on whether, whether it's LHR or non-LHR, it seems that the, the nomenclature Ti was indicative of that card being LHR may not apply to this particular card, but it's not much better than the 3090. It is a little bit, but it's not much better than 3090. In, in some cases, it actually performs equal to like a 3080, 3080 Ti, depending on the algorithm. For example, Mini Z uh, saw 86.8 souls at 340 watts. Uh, Ergo saw 276.5 mega hash at 304 watts. Uh, Ravencoin was low and different from Firo, so keep that in the back of your mind. I think what's happening here is as Gamers Nexus and many of the favorite uh, content creators out there, the tech YouTubers, uh, identified is that these cars, these NVIDIA GPUs, have a tendency to do what's called a silent crash. And so if you change the clocks, change the algorithm, change the application, and you don't reset the computer, that can impact performance, right? So if it's silent crash, you don't pick up on it and you continue playing your game or running your benchmarks, you're gonna have false data. So make sure you do that and pay attention. I think that's what happened during the live stream with Trump Change and Rondi when they were testing because the Ravencoin performance at stock, 450 watts, it is definitely pulling a lot of juice. Uh, it got about 58.98 mega hash and then 53.5 mega hash when they set the core to 200, uh, mem to 2000, 350 watts. On dual mining, which seems to be the most profitable for this GPU, they got a uh, 129 mega hash and uh, on Ethereum and then 3.625 on ton uh, with a 1600 lock core clock, a 2700 on the mem uh, with the power limit left alone, 444, 45 watts. But you can see there, if you want to tune it down to 350, it's about two giga hash or 125 mega hash for Ethereum. Now, ton only, they were able to get it up to 5.6 at 415 watts. They're still doing testing and they will come out with their summary video in the future. So stay tuned for that. And then with Firo, uh, 63 mega hash at 380 watts or 53.6 at 350 watts. So really some of the data as uh, many has already picked up on is a little bit like why is it performing less than you know 3080 ti or why is it lower on uh raven coin when firo shows a higher result again that probably is due to something happening silent crashes core clock discrepancies also temps were actually really cool 
And that is because, as we know for Gamers Nexus Teardown, that the it looks like the memory modules have been moved to the front and that heat sink is super thick so they got a lot of surface area to dissipate that memory heat so thermals are better on the 3090 ti than some of the pre, uh, previous 3000 series gpu uh, but i don't know the ambient air temperature for the area where this car was being ran at we only saw uh temps not exceed 70c on the memory which is really good and not exceed 60c on the core which is really good as well, but again, I can't validate that data because I know the, I don't know the ambient air temperatures. So, you know, with the data that's provided to us from our favorite tech YouTubers like Paul's Hardware, Gamers Nexus, Hardware Unbox, J's Two Cents, the uh, number of others out there, you know, really should you buy this card from a gaming perspective? If you want the absolute best, thirty eighty and 6800 xt or 6800 are pretty much your stopping point anything beyond that is like kind of diminishing returns from a gaming perspective yeah you might get some extra fps yada yada uh your arguments can go both ways on that but from a gaming perspective is it worth spending 2200 on the 3090 ti now i'm seeing some 3090s actually increase in price depending on who's the seller and at the same price point you could get the 3090 ti which is incrementally better than the 3090 so you might as well get that card if you are going to dump you know 22,000 to 2200 dollars on the card even scalpers are picking them up right now and if we look at ebay and even on newegg they're selling for 3000 plus which is unfortunate you know how the 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 gpu rollouts launch nowadays and unfortunately people are already trying to sell these cards for you know a thousand over the initial price of these gpus and we're going to continue to battle this the trend is going down gpu prices is getting better there aren't as many scalpers trying to scalp these gpus especially these high-end gpus more pricey gpus so things are getting better it's just going to take more time from the mining perspective uh i would rather get you know say for example two 3060 ti's or three 3060 ti's have more hash rate yes i lose density what i mean by that is you know i can have one card having that hash rate at 350 watts or 310 watts um and not have to take up three extra slots that's one consideration for some miners if they want that the highest density possible but from a power draw price to performance aspect you know if you don't mind taking up three slots two slots whatever you know 3060 ti 3070 full hash rate cards would be able to get the job done for your needs but it's going to be up to you to make the best decision for your budget if you got the budget to blow twenty two hundred dollars or two thousand dollars then go for it if you're going to be using it for gaming and mining this is certainly a powerful card it is very power hungry and even the aib models take the three eight pins into the unique atx 3.0 12 pin that will be following suit here in the future we talked about gpus becoming more and more power hungry you know we're going to see 550 500 uh, watt gpus in the future um, and what does that mean for the standard we'll just have to see how things work out but that's going to do it for today's video please do me a favor on the way out hit the like button don't forget to get subscribed hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out links in the description uh, where i will have the post to the data so far on the rtx 3090 ti we'll keep it updated so bear with me or i will do my best and uh besides that you all have yourself a wonderful day take care i'll catch you next one Thank you.